What's up everybody, I'm Jason and welcome back to another video looking at some tips and tricks for the EOS R5. This time around I'm going to dig into the in-camera lens corrections. So my usual disclaimer applies. Most of what I'm covering here also applies to the R5 siblings, including the EOS R, R6, and R3. However, I own and use an R5, that's what the focus of this video is on, and it's what I've done all of my testing with. Consequently, there may be differences between what I'm going to demonstrate here and what your camera actually does, at least if you use one of those other cameras. Now, additionally, lens corrections do depend on the lenses that you're using as well, so your my mileage there may vary additionally. Now, the R5 and its siblings can correct several lens aberrations in camera. These include vignetting, distortion, lateral chromatic aberrations, as well as diffraction and low-pass filter-driven softening. Now, before I get into those settings, there are some general points and limitations that apply across the board. So to start with, lens aberration corrections are only officially supported for first-party Canon lenses. When using third-party lenses, Canon recommends disabling the corrections, even if the camera reports that, in or that correction profiles are available. Now that said, RF lenses are supposed to be able to store their own correction profiles, so in theory, third-party RF lenses should be able to provide the correct or appropriate corrections to the camera. However, as of the time of the recording this video, there are so few third-party RF lenses available that it is not entirely clear what that situation will ultimately be. Now corrections are available for all RF and most, but not every EF lens, though the missing EF lenses are mostly designs from the late 1980s and early 1990s that weren't necessarily or that you're not necessarily probably going to run into. Now, all that said, additionally, profiles are not preloaded for every supported EF or EFS lens. That said, in my experience, most of the profiles for common lenses, especially those made in the last 20 or so years, are going to be preloaded. That said, the camera will tell you if it has a profile for your current lens when you look at the settings in the lens aberration correction menu. Now, if the camera doesn't have a profile for your lens preloaded, it can be added through the EOS utility software when your camera is connected to your computer over a USB cable. Secondly, none of these corrections alter the data in raw files, though the embedded previews will be corrected. However, the camera does save what corrections you have activated as metadata, and if you use Digital Photo Process or Professional to process your images, then the metadata, it uses that metadata to automatically apply the same corrections in post-processing. Now, a consequence of this is that if you are shooting in RAW, depending on what software you use for post-processing, you may not have access to some or all of the capabilities that are provided either by Digital Photo Professional or with the in-camera JPEGs. An example of this is Adobe's Lightroom doesn't support correction, uh, correcting diffraction-related softening. Third, the lens corrections that are enabled, with the exception of digital lens optimizer specific optimizations, are applied to the live view image. This means that you will see the effect of those settings in the viewfinder while shooting, though depending on the lens and the correction in question, it may not be very apparent. Fourth, lens corrections are available when shooting video. When using RF lenses, distortion, vignetting, and chromatic aberrations can be corrected. However, only vignetting and chromatic aberrations can be corrected when using EF, uh, uh, straight EF or EFS lenses. Lens aberration corrections are set separately, additionally, for the photo and video modes. So on the R5 in photo mode, the lens aberration corrections are found under the aptly titled Lens Aberration Correction menu entry, which is on the Shoot 3 menu page. In video mode, you'll find the same menu entry, but it will be on the Shoot 4 menu page instead. Fifth. Lens aberration corrections, except for digital lens optimizer when it is set to the high setting, do not impact the camera's performance. Frame rates, buffer sizes, write times, all of that stuff is all the same whether the corrections are enabled or not. Finally, 
some RF lenses, such as the RF 24 to 240 millimeter f4 to 6.3 IS USM, and even the RF 14 to 35 millimeter f4 L IS USM, force lens corrections to be enabled. For these lenses, the camera will enable the corrections automatically while the lens is mounted, and you will be unable to disable them through the camera's menus. Now, unfortunately, lens aberration corrections are also not compatible with multiple exposure shooting, at least on the R5 and R6, where the multiple exposure process is done with raw files. Now, on the R5 and R6, and with most lenses, what will happen is lens corrections will simply be ignored when multiple shooting is or multiple exposure shooting is enabled. However, for lenses that require mandatory corrections, multiple exposure shooting simply will be unavailable. Now, on the EOS R3, since multiple exposures are done using JPEGs instead of RAWs, this limitation no longer exists. So, with the big caveats out of the way, let's look at the settings. We're going to start with the four simpler corrections, vignetting, distortion, diffraction, and chromatic aberrations, and then we'll talk about Digital Lens Optimizer. Now, I should also note that all of the images presented in this video are ca were captured as in-camera JPEGs, so they reflect the processing that's being done in camera and not some post-processing tricks. First up is peripheral illumination or vignetting correction. As the name implies, this removes the corner darkening or vignetting from your images. The only potential drawback to using vignetting correction is that it can amplify noise in the image corners, where the image has to be lightened the most. However, this is true whether that's being done or the correction is being done in camera or in post-processing software like Lightroom or camera uh, digital photo professional. Now, to combat the potential noise issues, the amount of correction that's used in camera is reduced as the ISO speed and therefore noise increases. Next up is distortion correction. Now, distortion correction aims to remove the lens's geometric distortions from the resulting image. Fixing distortion is destructive at the pixel level. Uh, the image as the image has to be warped to remove that distortion. However, I put destructive in air quotes as while that's technically true, there's an increasing number of cases where the choice, if you even have one to start with, is between what I would call a destructively distorted image and a corrected image that has suffered some losses from the corrections and the distortion, but at least looks like a decent picture. Now, in video mode, distortion correction is only available when using RF lenses. Next, I'm going to jump down to chromatic aberration correction. Now, there are two types of chromatic aberrations that lenses can cause, lateral and longitudinal. Now, these are also called transverse and axial, respectively. If you run into that nomenclature, it, they get used interchangeably. Now, lateral chromatic aberrations show up as color fringes that are most noticeable around high contrast edges towards the periphery of your frame. On the other hand, axial chromatic aberrations cause color shifts in the bokeh halos in front of and behind the point of focus. Now, strictly speaking, both types of chromatic aberrations can be reduced computationally. However, axial chromatic aberrations tend to be harder for software to deal with. Canon's chromatic aberration correction only corrects for lateral chromatic aberrations. Now, the final simple correction is diffraction correction. Now, diffraction correction attempts to combat the loss of sharpness that's caused by diffraction when shooting at small apertures. Now, as camera makers have continued to increase sensor resolutions over the last, you know, over the years, diffraction has become more and more of a limiting factor in utilizing those increases fully. With a 20 megapixel full frame camera like the EOS R6, you should expect to see increases in sharpness from stopping down until you get to around f10 or so. And you wouldn't expect to see significant softening from diffraction until maybe f16 or f18. On the other hand, a full 45 megapixel full frame camera like the R5 stops seeing sharpening gains at around f7.1 and will start seeing softening by f11 or f14. Additionally, diffraction correction in Canon's R5 and R6 and R3 also compensates for low pass filter softening and other factors that Canon doesn't completely enumerate on. 
corrections are optimized for the lens and shooting aperture and of course the camera that you're using in the case of low pass filter corrections. Finally, don't expect this to be the end all be all solution to all diffraction related pro problems. The processing helps, but at very small apertures, very fine details will be completely blurred out by diffraction, and those details simply can't be magically recovered. This brings me to the big one, Digital Lens Optimizer. And I say the big one because it not only includes the standard chromatic aberration and diffraction corrections, but several other corrections and optimizations for each lens as well. However, in the research that I've done on this, I have not been able to find an exhaustive list from Canon on what exactly Digital Lens Optimizer does or corrects for or how it does it. So I know that it does correct for diffraction and low pass filter softness. I also know it corrects for chromatic aberrations and it will correct for peripheral softness and wide open softness. But whether that's the extent of the processing or not isn't clear. Additionally, there's no good information on whether there's a difference between the chromatic aberration and diffraction corrections that is done in Digital Lens Optimizer or the ones that are done using the standalone settings, if there even is a difference. Regardless of the exact processing done, however, Digital Lens Optimizer dynamically adjusts the amount of processing and the processing being done for the, the lens, the lens focal length, the shooting aperture, the focusing distance, and the currently selected ISO. For example, higher ISOs, processing is reduced in conjunction with the increasing noise so as to not just amplify it and make your image look worse. Additionally, some corrections make use of the lens's focusing distance, and for lenses that don't provide distance information, they will have the overall corrections reduced for those corrections. Now, on the R5, R6, and R3, Digital Lens Optimizer has two available levels, standard and high. Standard does not have an impact on performance, but it also doesn't apply as much correction to the images. High increases the extent of the processing, but it does so at the cost of increased processing time. This results in slower write speeds to the card or taking longer to write the images to the card, which reduces the buffer size and therefore how many frames you can shoot in a burst when shooting continuously. Now, of course, here exactly what's being done differently, turned off, adjusted, etc., is not made clear by Canon. When Digital Lens Optimizer is enabled, the options for chromatic aberration and diffraction correction will not appear in the lens aberration correction menu. However, don't fear, they are enabled, they just can't be controlled independently of Digital Lens Optimizer. Now, unlike the other corrections, Digital Lens Optimizer does not affect the real-time image display. At least this is the case for the Digital Lens specific sharpening. So you won't see the results in the viewfinder while you're shooting. However, in my testing at least, and I believe it's even stated in the manual, Corrections like chromatic aberration correction still appear or still will be applied to the live image even if the full extent of the digital lens processing isn't. So aside from the performance impacts of using the high setting, there are two potential side effects to using digital lens optimizer. First is that under certain circumstances, noise can be intensified by the correction process. Now, my guess is that you're most likely to see this at low to mid ISOs where the correction levels haven't been significantly reduced in conjunction with increasing noise and when the camera's temperature is high, which are generally just creates more noise in your images to start with. Though I do admit that this is a bit of a guess as replicating all the possible conditions that could affect digital lens optimizer and so forth is outside my ability to reasonably test. Additionally, digital lens optimizer in conjunction with a picture style that includes significant sharpening can result in over sharpened images. In those cases, Canon's recommendation is to reduce the pixels, picture styles sharpening or disable digital lens optimizer. 
though which perf is preferable or what order you should do this in, Canon doesn't actually say. And as with many things, my recommendation here is that you just are going to have to test this for yourself and see, first of all, if this is a problem for you with your picture style and digital lens optimizer setting, and if so, which solution works best while still meeting your personal minimums. Now, as with all of the other lens aberration corrections, raw files are unaffected aside from having metadata set. So if you shoot in raw, there's basically no benefit to enabling digital lens optimizer and especially setting it to high in camera. Now, finally, digital lens optimizer is only available in photo mode. So let's talk about recommendations. My recommendation here is actually really simple. Turn on, if you use Canon lenses at least, turn on all of the standard lens aberration corrections and only consider using digital lens optimizer if you're shooting with JPEGs. Now my reasoning for this goes something to this effect. If you're a JPEG shooter, the in-camera image corrections are done before there are any losses to JPEG compression. Given that, while you certainly could do the same corrections in post-processing software, and potentially that software could use a better algorithm or possibly give you better results, that software also has to deal with the fact that it's working with a lossy compressed image to start with, and that those losses inc include JPEG compression artifacts. That said, I also suspect that most people shooting in JPEG aren't doing much in the way of post-processing anyways, either for streamlining or their workflow or simply because they're not interested in doing that. So in addition to the corrections being done before the JPEG compression happens, having the corrections enabled also means that you're getting a corrected image out of the camera instead of having to do anything else to it in post. It's faster either way. The only real decision I see is, when shooting JPEGs at least, is whether to use digital lens optimizer or not and at what level. And ultimately, as I said before, I think the answer to this lies with each individual user. And you'll just have to test your picture style, your uh, the digital lens optimizer settings, and see which options and settings meet your needs and minimums. Now, for raw shooters, the standard lens corrections are applied to both the viewfinder and review images. So the shooting experience should better reflect the kind of corrections I think you're likely to do in post, at least the kind of corrections I'm going to do in post. However, since raw files, the raw files themselves are unaltered, you still have complete control over the post processing done that, you know, in the software when you're processing the images in post. Now, finally, for video shooters, lens the lens correction situation in NLEs like DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro is put simply horrific. Even in Adobe's products where they have lens correction profiles available, as you see in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom, there's no fast or efficient way to process video in the way that you can process stills. Compounding the issue further, it's not entirely their fault as the required metadata like the aperture, the focus position, and the focal length isn't continuously saved in most video formats. Now, this might not be the case for raw video in the R5. I haven't enough experience to know for sure on that one. So even if the post-processing software wanted to apply corrections, it has no way to know what the exact corrections it needs to apply are for any given frame. Consequently, the best solution currently is to correct the video in camera so it doesn't have to be corrected in post. So that's lens aberration corrections on the EOS R5 and its siblings. If you found this useful or at least interesting, let me know by hitting the like button. If this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing. Finally, if you know someone who might also find this useful or informative, help them and me by sharing it with them. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.